What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Kyle. Crystal's over there. <laughs> Welcome back to KC Kayak Fishing. So we're out here for the, I think it's the first, second event of the West Coast Kayak Angler Series. Saltwater side of their year long series. We're out here in beautiful Mactush Creek campground. And it is pandemonium out here right now. There are boats everywhere. But we're in a tournament, so we're gonna try and get some fish. There's Crystal. <laughs> and conditions are absolutely atrocious. So we're out here targeting Chinook. Crystal is trolling right now with a three inch spoon. I can't remember the name. If I remember it, I'll uh, put a link in the description. It's from Lighthouse Lures. I think it's a Night Rider. I'm not sure. Big old flasher. She's on a five pound ball. So we're, apparently there's some late season sockeye here too. Be nice to get one of those, but we're gonna do a couple passes here with Crystal. I'm not gonna have any gear in the water just to make sure she's comfortable and knows what she's doing. Plus we all know that everybody only wants to see Crystal on the channel too. You guys are tra you guys are traders. So every time you want to when you're bringing the downrigger ball up, you don't have to click the bail, but when you're going down, you got to click the thumb. When you, if you get a fish on, try pulling some line out just with your hand. No, no. Yeah, right above the reel. Yeah, I'd loosen your drag off then. You want it tight to reel down, like just so that you can snug up the line. Yeah. A little bit, tiny bit more. Yeah. Just so that the fish can take the line and you want to pedal forward. You're gonna pedal forward, don't grab it right out of the rod holder right away. Just, just pedal forward so the rod's bent and it'll start banging like this and then you can reach up and grab it. And all you gotta do is lift straight up and it'll come out of the rod holder. Well, the conditions got a little better. So we'll go down past, there's no one behind us. It seems like everybody's staying over closer to shore. There's still a lot of boats down here though. I think we'll just stay on this line until we get out to the point. Look at all the boats. Holy sh I'm not seeing as much as when we first came out here. Should I put a rod in the water?
This is crazy guys, there's boats stacked up everywhere. Not bad, how about you? Got a little late. What's that? Yeah, it's crazy out here right now. Good luck. Are they biting on spoons? I don't know, I think if we're passing through this many fish, they're not biting. Might have to switch. Maybe a hoochie, yeah. It seems to be handling this six pound ball all right though. I'm using a six pound downrigger ball today, guys, which is not recommended for the Scotty Lake Troller. <laughs> so, do not do as I do. You're cutting me off. So pull all that seaweed off here. Once you get that up and I'll give you this one. Okay guys, we're switching it up. I'm talking to the camera. We're switching it up now. Spoons did one pass for about an hour. We're gonna switch it up to a white hoochie, I think. I just saw someone else hook up on a nice little spring or Chinook with a white hoochie. That's what we're gonna do. Always be observant of what everyone else is catching fish with. You're not like in the weeds or anything, are you? No. That was definitely a fish. Crystal just had the first bite of the day. And I missed it because the camera was off. Pedal, pedal. Pull your rod out of the reel, or out of the thing. Now, turn to the left. Huh? Turn left. <laughs> Crystal's hooked up. Okay, stop. Stop, 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 stop. What am I doing? Let him run. Hold up, hold up. Just stop for a sec. Is he still pulling? Does it feel like there's a fish on there? Yeah. Hold on. Oh, I got a fish too. It's a friggin' lingcod. <laughs> what the hell? You might be snagged. Yeah, there's a line following you in the water. Is that your depth? I think you just broke your downrigger ball off. You were snagged. There must have been. <clears throat> well, we got a link on. <laughs>
Hey? Yeah. That wasn't a fish, you were snagged. Are you sure it was 25 feet? Because we're only 45 feet deep here right now. Well, re are you still snagged? You're gonna lose the flasher too. Okay, we're back. So what we thought was a fish on Crystal's line really ended up being her downrigger ball smashed into the bottom because it came up super shallow here. Nobody's fault or anything. New area. Yeah, stay close to the rocks as long as it doesn't come up to 15 feet deep. So we're good now. We're down one downrigger ball, but good thing I always carry spares. And we avoided a nasty situation because that could have flipped the boat pretty easily. Live and learn, everyone's okay. It's only money that we're losing. Got Crystal on a spare ball, had to give her my downrigger clip. So I got a line clip on right now basically the same thing it just attaches to the line instead of the bottom of the back of the downrigger weight and I'm gonna try green hoochie crystals gonna stick with the uh, white there is fish in the water everyone seems to be hooking up but us so what's up What is? Can you loosen it off? God, how did that happen? Pull it up, like pull it down, Rigger out.
hell. Bit pop off the clip. God damn it. No. A little rockfish. Probably why nothing was biting. Oh, I should have taken a picture of it for the species. No, it was like a brown rockfish. It wasn't a copper or anything like that. We'll just go out here, then we'll head straight that way. All right guys, we're back, round two. Just went in, had a quick bite to eat, and I realized that I wanted to try some anchovies with a teaser head. These are lighthouse lures. Anchovy teaser heads, I wanted to try them, and I had none tied up. The one thing I forgot to do, so we had to come back in and do that, and of course, of course now the wind is picking up, so I think our time is limited out here, but we're going to give her a shot anyways. Oh yeah, she's blowing. What do you know guys? The wind and the rain, it's gone. Maybe we're just in the eye of the storm right now, but we'll take it. Sunny, I'm actually hot right now, which I didn't think I would be today, but I'm not gonna complain. I'm, I'm at 44. Great minds think alike. Well guys, Crystal hooked up into a salmon and it ended up spitting the hook probably 20 feet from the boat. So I think we're onto something with the anchovies so we're gonna stick with it. We're just gonna keep working this side back and forth because that's where we've seen the most action. Need to get baby girl on a fish. Yep, yeah, wherever you want to go, you're the boss. You're the only one that's hooked up to a fish today, I think. You are in charge. I don't think you could have played it any different. 
Sometimes shit just happens. Yeah. Alrighty guys, I'm back for round three. <laughs> the night bite. Just went and had some dinner. <sighs> that was good. Well, I actually tried to convince Crystal that, you know, maybe, maybe we should just call it a day. Ugh. She was determined. She said, no, I want to catch a salmon. I said, are you sure? I don't know if that's such a good idea, because I'm really tired. She said, no, we're going back out. She said, do the dishes, I'll meet you at the boats. So I did the dishes and met her back at the boat. And now we're fishing again. <laughs> Hasn't really been all that productive of a day other than Crystal's one hookup that she got towards the end of the afternoon session there. And that bite came on an anchovy behind a bigger green flasher so I think we're gonna try that again you all right That might have been what you what hit it. I don't know what it is. Ow! I'm not sure. Oh, we got a fish, guys. <laughs> and I have no idea what kind of rock fish it is. I dropped it. Dang it. Ready? Okay. We're back at home now. This is a few days later, as in a couple weeks later. I totally forgot to film an outro of the video while we were at Mactush. 
got dark the first day and we weren't able to stay a second day. We had to leave early in the morning. Unfortunately, no salmon were caught by any kayak fishers in the tournament on the day that we fished. The second day, however, early, early in the morning, we could hear people hooking up to fish and we almost, <laughs> almost thought about unloading the boats and putting them back in the water and trying to join everybody. But unfortunately I had to work the next day and we, our babysitters had to leave, so. But it was a good thing that we didn't actually cause then we had a flat yeah, we, we had, had to deal with. We ended up having a flat tire too. Yeah. Just going to pull the trailer out and boom, flat tire. So it was a lot more of a headache and a lot more time taken up. So I'm glad we didn't unload the boats. Mm -hmm. And shout out to your mom too for watching the kids for the night or two nights. That yeah. was a... Uh... <laughs> She's a brave woman. Yeah. So what do you yeah. think about your first tournament and your first kayak fishing for salmon trolling experience out of Mactush? Um, overall, I think it was a definitely a good learning experience. Um, I had a lot to learn, so it was a little bit overwhelming, um, mainly because it was very busy with lots of boats, lots of boat traffic. So trying to learn how to troll and get my downrigger down while also like really watching my surroundings was a bit um, overwhelming at times. But once I got the hang of it, um, it was great and it was really fun. Um, although I didn't catch a salmon, um, it was still a really neat experience. And by the end of the first day, like I felt pretty confident um, trolling and using my downrigger um, and watching my fish finder and all that. So it was definitely a good learning curve for me. We went out all morning, came back and ate, and then we'd gone back out in the evening. Um, and there was something weird going on with both our fish finders in like one particular area, kind of a little bit closer to the shore. There's like a rock wall there. And it was really odd. Like our fish finders were glitching out where like our screen would just go blank for a bit. And then all of a sudden you thought you were at like 40 feet and then you're like, at 80 and it would just like change really abruptly. So it was almost like it wasn't getting a read in a certain area. And for me, um, I was watching my fish finder and there was like a huge school of fish with some big fish in there. So I was like super excited and I was trolling at 30 feet and the fish were all at 30 feet. So I was really excited. And then out of nowhere, I felt like this really sharp tug and I'm like, oh, I'm hooked up, great. Um, and so I kind of stopped paying attention to my fish finder and I was more focused on my line and my rod thinking I had a fish. But really what had happened was I think my fish finder kind of glitched out because all of a sudden I looked and I was at 15 feet. So my downrigger ball obviously got snagged and hooked up um, on a rock. And my boat was kind of like tipping a little bit and thankfully I let the drag off and um, it was okay, but like I could have flipped and the cables or the, the, the cable snapped for the downrigger, which that was a good thing. Cause otherwise I probably would have flipped. Um, and I was kind of like a little bit shook enough after that. I mean, if I flipped, I would have been okay. Um, you know, it's summertime. I could get back in my boat fairly quickly. It's just losing all that gear would have really sucked for sure. Um, but yeah, it was a good kind of learning experience. Like, although my fish finder, Glitching out wasn't really my fault. I think, you know, it's a new area. We'd never fished before either. And so I was really relying on that fish finder and I was getting a little bit overconfident. Um, and I mean, really where it all happened, I was fairly close to shore. So I should have just maybe been a little bit more hypervigilant. Um, I got really excited about <laughs> the school of fish under me, um, got a little distracted. So yeah, just like a good reminder to be aware of your surroundings, especially in a new territory that you have fished before. And yeah, I mean, it all was okay, but yeah, I, I didn't fish for a bit after that. I was like, nope, I'm pulling my line. I'm just gonna drift around, catch my bearings um, and let Kyle fish. Cause I think he was a bit frustrated too. He had to like help me get all unsnagged. And <laughs> there was a few uh, F-bombs under his breath. Um, so yeah, I I, kind of just like did my thing and just watched him fish for a bit and got, you know, shook out the nerves. And then, then I was good. I'm like, nope, like I need to keep going with this. I'm going to catch myself a big old salmon, which 
didn't happen, but you know, that's the name of the game and uh, the name of the sport, so. Guys, another good tip too that we've come to realize is in that whole scenario where she ran her downrigger ball into the bottom and thank God the cable snapped. But it wasn't the cable that originally came with the Scot Scotty Lake Troller. We switched it out for the braided line, which I think is rated for 250 pounds worth of force. Like it's 250 pound test braid. So the weight of the boat being 150 or whatever with all the gear and stuff plus you on it was enough to break that cable instead of flip the boat whereas if it had the stainless steel cable that came on or on it with that came with the scotty lake troller who knows what would have happened i don't think it would have snapped probably would have flipped the boat and then there would have been a lot more f-bombs under my breath i think <laughs> yeah <laughs> so just a little tip for you guys i think everybody who has a scotty lake troller or any type of downrigger too like there's no need to run the stainless steel cable switch it out spend the extra money and it is a safety feature that it will break. All right, so that unfortunately, no salmon were caught by us. And that's a reality of kayak fishing. I mean, I know it looks like it's just fish after fish after fish when we get out there. That's the magic of editing. Like yeah. I, it, it can sometimes be days and days of going out, hours and hours put into this and no fish, no bites, no nothing. So I thought I'd put this video out just to show you guys the beautiful scenery in Maktush. If you guys haven't been there, I highly recommend that you get out there. Fish weren't biting the day that we were there and the day that we were fishing, not much we could do about it. No. But getting out together, having some time alone in the middle of nowhere in a beautiful location was what it was all about. Mm -hmm. But yeah, if you guys are thinking that I'm gonna jump on a kayak and I'm gonna catch fish like everybody on YouTube does, it does not happen that way. Well, I've you been, have your days. Like... You definitely do have your days and I have lots of days where I don't catch anything and it's frustrating and disappointing trying to get the videos and the content out to you guys. But I thought it was the same thing. You see all these guys on YouTube, they're just pulling out fish, pulling out fish. But that's what makes it's... it so amazing. It's like you have to work so hard. And then when you do catch that fish, it's just like you won the lottery. Yeah, I don't exactly. Know. It just feels so good. Yeah. Anyways, guys, that's it. We're done. We're going to wrap this video up. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. Thanks for everybody, for all you subscribers out there and everybody viewing and liking the video. We really do appreciate all the support. And if you guys haven't already, make sure you go down below, smash that subscribe button, hit the like, turn on notifications, share the video with your friends even. Follow us on Instagram as well too, at KC Kayak Fishing, and Facebook as well, at KC <laughs> Kayak Fishing. All those things. <laughs> All those things. We're also going to leave a link in the description down below for the West Coast Kayak Angler Series um, website if anybody on the island or you're visiting the island during the season and you want to check it out. It's a great opportunity to meet a bunch of other like-minded folks and enjoy some kayak fishing in the safety of a group. A shout out to all the organizers of the West Coast Kayak Angler Series. I know it's a thankless job and you guys put a lot of time into it. So that was a great event and we can't wait to be part of more. Totally. Till next time, guys. We're out of here. <laughs>